The governor's race has been one of the heated, most heated races in this election. It has gone back and forth through much of the night. Right now, incumbent Delbert Hoseman is in the lead. His challenger, Chris McDaniel, is in Biloxi and is speaking tonight. Let's listen in. Move forward. What I want, though, I want strong, principled people to lead. And right now, the state of Mississippi doesn't have a lot of those people. We have some. We have some, but not a lot. In this tonight, if I could leave a message to anybody out there, it's just how about when you campaign as a conservative, that you just fulfill those promises once you're elected? How about you stand on your own two feet and not play follow the leader of the Capitol? How about you just fight for the Constitution, fight for our platform, and be the person you claimed you were when you ran? That's all we've ever asked. It's not personal. They're not bad people. They're caught up in a system that is corrupted. And the system, if it doesn't change soon, is going to corrupt them all eventually. So, no, I, um, as a whole, speaking generally, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to miss it. Um, I'll miss the fight only in the Capitol, but I can still fight other ways. I can still fight other ways. Yeah. Yeah. Is this a concession? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. No, listen, I mean, we, we can all add and we can see the numbers. And at some point, uh, some press organization will call the race. And, and at that stage, we'll look at the numbers and we'll, be, uh, we'll respect the, the decision of the people of this state. And I want to be clear about something. Um, the race became so nasty in so many ways. I do not dislike Delbert Hoseman. I did not dislike any member of that Senate. I was just fighting for my principles the best way I knew how. And um, what happens is I think sometimes competition gets in the way and passion gets in the way and people say things they shouldn't. And I'm okay with that. I want the Senate to know, I want uh, Delbert Hoseman to know there are no hard feelings from my perspective. Um, but. If he keeps moving the body to the left, I'm going to be the very guy, even if it's not in the chamber, trying to find a way to move that body back to the right every chance I get. It doesn't have to get personal. It doesn't have to be hateful. We should be debating the ideas. And that was something else I really I wish we could have done this cycle. I think the people are owed a debate. I really do. And I think what happens is the, the incumbent class hides behind all that money and they're able to control the narrative of the spending. And I get that. But at the very least, I think if you can't stand before the people and debate your ideas, you really don't belong in public office. I would like to see everyone participate in debates from time to time, no matter what your party, no matter what your lead, no matter what your incumbent status. I think the people deserve that and are owed that. And uh, that's, that's the one thing I have regretted with this campaign. Yeah. Anything else? If this race doesn't go your way, are you ruling out any possibility of a political? Are you ruling out any possibility of a further run in the future? No, I mean you would never do that because if um, I feel like politics has been a calling, I don't think it defines me though. I want to be clear about that. I um, I've enjoyed the fight. I like to debate and I like to uh, argue and I like to be a part of the, mm -hmm. the policy issue. But I'm a, I'm a much more complex person than that. I have a, a great law practice. I have a, a wonderful children, a wonderful family. Um, I have a great mom still here. And there are other things that define us as people. So I don't feel the need to be in politics to be successful. I think I've already been successful, and I think God has blessed me beyond, beyond what I deserve. And so if it happens, it happens. But if it doesn't, that's okay, too. I, uh, I'm perfectly satisfied. I have fought for 16 years. You know, 16 years is a long time to do anything. If I had a 16-year major league career, I'd be an old baseball player. Maybe I'm just an old politician now. But 16 years is a long time, and I'm very proud of the work I've done. I'm proud to be the most conservative member of that Senate. I'm proud to be endorsed by ACU and CPAC. I'm proud of all the past things that I've done. I'm not perfect, but I can tell you this, I always did my very best to defend my principles. We're proud of you, I want to add to that, I thought uh, the campaign staff that I had this time was outstanding. Um, you know, Christian Hewlett and others that came into this uh, fight, Christian Vasquez, others. Um, and all you great people, my friends, Gerald, Colby, all you, Mary Jo, uh, Lindsay, all of you. I, I could list names all day. You guys are awesome. And um, we really actually ran a really good campaign considering we didn't have a whole lot of money. I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of that. Um, so look, um, I don't know where the future is, but I know it's always going to be around you guys some way in some capacity. How's that sound, okay? All right. I love y'all. I really do, and I, re I appreciate it very much. Thank y'all. Thank you. Anything else?
All right, well, um, guys, I appreciate it. It's been a, it's been a fun race. And it's disappointing that the numbers are what they are right now, but we respect the people of this state to make wise decisions. And uh, hopefully one day we can uh, find a way to, to get more conservatives elected and to move forward as a state in a different path than where we've moved at least in the last few years. Look, I'm a Republican. I'm going to fight for Republicans, and I hope all this goes well for us. Uh, in the meantime, if you need me, I'll be here, always fighting for my belief system. Thank you all. God bless you. State Senator Chris McDaniel live in Biloxi speaking to his supporters tonight, saying this was not a concession speech, but certainly sounding like he is seeing the writing on the wall tonight and seeing the numbers currently in play in the race for lieutenant governor. Here are the latest numbers on your screen with 74% of precincts reporting. McDaniel is behind trailing incumbent lieutenant governor Delbert Hoseman, who currently has 52% of the vote. 16 WABT's Ross Adams has been following this race. He's been with lieutenant governor Hoseman's campaign at River Hills and joins us now live. What's going on there now, Ross? Yeah, still about 25% of the vote left to be counted. Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hosman with about a 10 point lead, but he is not quite ready to come out and address his supporters yet. We're hearing from the campaign spokesperson that they won't be bringing the candidate down to address his supporters until the race has been called. We could just got some, perhaps some new intelligence. We're going to speak with the, uh, Mr. Hoseman's son, Mark Hoseman. Mark, you, you were just speaking with the campaign aide a moment ago. What can you tell us about how soon we can expect to hear from the lieutenant governor? Yeah, I think he'll be joining us momentarily. I think the numbers are starting to trend in a very positive direction for a decisive victory. So we expect him to join us any moment here to celebrate. And we're, we're proud of the campaign that he's run. I, I've been hearing all night that there is surprise that the turnout was low and, and that is uh, perhaps impacting why this race is so close. Yeah, I think there's probably some validity to that. I, you know, I know pollster myself, so I can't speak to why the turnout was low, but I can say that uh, what it seems to be shaping up to be a decisive victory for my father and we're very proud of the campaign that he ran. We're, we think that Mississippians showed up today and, and spoke in favor of productivity, record, hard work, uh, and they're appreciative of the work that he's done, and we're appreciative of the people who did show up to vote for him today. Obviously, we've seen negative campaign uh, ads from both sides. How has your father personally been impacted? Because I know he did not want to have to go negative, but once your opponent takes the first blow, you have to return the lift. Sure, absolutely. I, you know, I think that my father defended his own record uh, very well and defended his own faith and beliefs. It's very difficult in this day and age to combat lies and misinformation. And I think he did that in a very respectful manner. He defended himself as any American would when attacked in that manner, um, but always pivoted back to his accomplishments in office. His record is what carried the day here. And, and I think that's what we'll all look back and remember. If things turn negative, you can always make a positive out of it by turning to productivity and record. Thank you, appreciate it. So that's that Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman's son, Mark Hoseman, giving us a sense of how his father is feeling tonight as he ex is expecting to be victorious after a very hard fought race. Chris McDaniel giving him a big fight of his life, perhaps one of the closest races Hoseman has ever faced in his more than a decade and a half as a statewide elected official. That's the very latest from here in Northeast Jackson. Now back to you.